Hello my soccer universe. I'm wearing my oldest jersey. Real vintage. It is just... It's still my favorite, although it has so many flaws. The crest, I know. I, I actually want to try to iron it out a little bit. Or, you know, maybe press it somehow. Same thing goes for the collar. But you know, I got this in 1990 or 1991. Somewhere around there. And I've worn it a lot, especially in school. It's still in good condition. It doesn't have pulls. It's just this thing and this was because my mother washed it a little bit hot. There was something happening after the wash and it was never the same again. It is still, that is my favorite jersey. My first one. I'm wearing Italy because we're gonna talk today about I want to project the draw of Euro 2020 because there are so many things and you will see we know more about the draw already then you would know otherwise and for me that's worth of a video um i made a lot of um graphics so i uh, hope you will be able to follow those a little bit um it will be an intriguing video i just didn't take it the last step the last step is to actually based on the draw that i come out in the end to actually project uh, where things will will be going but you already will get a pretty good idea how things might pan out. As I say, I will indicate where I am making conjecture. Uh, I will indicate uh, what we know for sure and then we'll take it from there. So let's start out. This is where we currently stand. The six, uh, ten groups uh, and with two match days still to go. Uh, you see in groups A to E, there are a lot of teams with six or seven uh, games, so it's kind of uneven. And group uh, F to J, everyone has eight games. And we already have a few teams qualified, namely Ukraine, Spain, Poland, Belgium, Russia and Italy. That's one reason why I'm wearing Italy now. Um, and I will keep the teams bolded um, that are qualified throughout the entire video. Uh, now in the last five groups, F to J, I also marked the last place team uh, with red and graded out because in order, that's the first step that we want to go, is to determine how will the pots be. And the pots this time are not decided by a co coefficient or by a Nations League ranking. It's actually rather straightforward. Um, you take all the first place teams and order them. And then you take all the second place teams and order them. And then you see how they fit into the pots. So the best six teams make up pot, uh, pot one. Then the next best four plus the two best um, second place teams are in pot two. Then all but the worst two second place teams are in pot three. And then pot four is two second place teams and the four playoff teams. So uh, that makes it rather easy. What does not make it easy is that we have groups of size five and size six. For that reason, I mark them because in order to decide what's the best place, first place team and so on, and second place teams, we take out the games against six place teams. And currently we would arrive at the following standings and therefore the following pots. Um, so let's see, uh, you see the stars in the bottom group, this uh, means I take out all the games of those five, uh, of the last place teams. Um, and actually we have one big change is that in this case France is three points ahead of Turkey. Because I took uh, Moldova out because they're currently the last place team. Uh, and France um, still uh, has already played uh, against Moldova, so um, they... Uh, yeah, has played uh, has to play one more time against Moldova. That's why they have one game more. Um, in this case, you see also some other changes, um, but uh, nothing as big as that one. I think in Group G, Slovenia, Macedo uh, Northern Macedonia, Israel is switching around, um, and so on. So um, if we take now the team with the most points at first place is the Ukraine, then uh, Belgium, Italy, Spain. England and the Netherlands. This would be currently what's in pot one. In pot two we have uh, then Croatia, Poland, Turkey, Ireland and you see already Ireland grayed out because I don't think Ireland will make it to the Euros, at least not via the qualification group. I mean they have a chance if they beat Denmark in their last game. But other than that, I don't see. So that's already a little stum step stumbling stone there. 
Then we have Russia and France. Then the top three would be Germany, Austria, Denmark, Czechoslovakia, uh, Czechia, Finland and Hungary also. Currently Hung Hungary is in second spot. I don't think that Hungary will qualify. And then in pot four, rather surprisingly, Portugal and Sweden. And then we have the four playoff teams. Now, you can already see Portugal, Sweden, there's something not quite right because they only have six games. They still have two games to play, while Croatia, Hungary, they have already seven games. You know, uh, it is not a very even thing. So the current standing for the pots is a rather dissatisfactory one. So what we need is, we kind of need to make a little bit conjecture of where the groups currently are and how they project to end and then uh, assemble the pots and I did this uh, using betting odds converting them into probabilities and uh, computing the average points so I'm getting rid of the whole goal difference I'm just use, using now expected points that means current point and how many points on average are expected for each team for the remaining games one or two games was quite some work to do it but this is how the 10 groups would end up that way so we have actually not too much change in most of the groups i think uh, notable group c we have germany uh, expected to finish ahead of the netherlands because the netherlands has to go to northern ireland which they may expect to make less points uh, denmark is overtaking um Swiss, uh, Ireland, same with Switzerland, so they finish in that order. What I always call Slovakia will finish second in Group E. Uh, in Group F, I'm quite surprised. Um, to me, Norway has the smallest chance, but Romania, actually, if they beat Sweden, they would have a chance, but they're not much favored, so they actually dropped the first spot, a spot there. Um, and yeah, Group uh, I, Scotland, <laughs> is uh, projected to finish third. Let's see about that, but you know, and also France ahead of Turkey, which I also was kind of expecting. But you know, not much has changed here. What has changed is that Moldova will overtake Andorra in Group H. So that's the only team that I have to take, take out that they didn't take out before. And then we'll end up with the evened out groups this way. Uh, where, again, the qualified teams except for the things where I already told you, have not uh, changed. So we have Germany ahead of the Netherlands, Denmark, uh, Swiss, Switzerland ahead of Ireland, uh, with France and Turkey qualifying in that order, and Spain, Sweden, I think, and Croatia, Slovakia. And now, going through the pots, we have um, Belgium is the best team, followed by Italy, since they're all unbeaten so far, and then Germany. Germany is also playing a strong qualification. Ukraine uh, shortly after, England and Spain. That's the pot one. Pot two, France, Poland, Denmark, Croatia, Netherlands, Russia, in that order. Pot three, Turkey, Portugal, Switzerland, Czech, Czechia, I want to say, yeah, Czech Republic, it's all right. Austria and Finland, and Sweden and Slovakia would currently make the last pot. Now, we already know the playoffs from my previous video where I gave you some pre predictions, so I'm filling those in now as I predicted them. I think uh, from the League A playoff, Iceland will make it. From the League B playoff, Wales will make it, although, you know, there is Ireland and Bosnia in there. Um, Bosnia is probably a good chance, but I overall would like Wales out of that one. Uh, in League C, I favor Serbia. And from League D, I favor Kosovo based on what I've seen so far. Again, I keep those in gray because this is very much conjecture. I think I feel much safer about the other pots down there. Uh, although, you know, there are a few. Slovakia, I think, is one that I'm not so sure about. Um, Ireland, very slightly, but I think I'm quite convinced and that you know Czech Republic call Kosovo could something happening but uh, it looks pretty much set to me the way it stands now so this is how I would think the pots are going of course there are changes again bolder teams are teams that already have qualified greater teams are ones that come through the playoff where I just try to predict now the playoff but I'm not 100% certain that it will of course go that way but we can take it a step further we also can look at how the groups will be because this is a Euros that is played in 12 cities in um, not necessarily 12 different countries but in 12 different federations because we have the UK with two stadiums in Glasgow and in London and for that we now need to mark and here the whole thing becomes very complicated because every team host nation 
that qualifies will be allowed to play at least two games in their own stadium. They will play three if there's no other if the other host nation in the group did not qual qual qualify. And if both qualify, there will be a draw of who will play three games at home. So let's mark green are all the host nations already marked. We see, for instance, Germany and the Netherlands are two host nations that are in the same group. Same thing is for Spain and Romania, but it doesn't look good for Romania. Uh, and let's see the nations that don't qualify according to what I'm saying. It's Ireland, Hungary, Azerbaijan, and Romania, and Scotland. So those are the teams that will not qualify. And we already have them marked here now down in the pots as well. So we have Italy, England, Germany, Spain, Denmark, Netherlands, Russia. Seven host nations qualify. So let's see the groups. Group A, Rome and Baku. Uh, pretty sure that Azerbaijan will not qualify. The Rome-Baku group is the one that kills me. This, they, they, this was a draw and I'm actually, I don't like Nasser that they did the uh, draw beforehand. I think it would actually have been nicer if the draw would have taken place uh, at the same, the same time. Determine the pairings or make it geographically because Rome and Baku Whoever has to, as, 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 as we will see, the team that has to play Italy in the second round, that's the one that is really effed because you have to go uh, Baku, Rome, Baku or something like that. Uh, just uh, nuts. St. Petersburg, Copenhagen. This, that's the one group where we have two teams qual qualified and you already see um, with the current pots this does not really happen that easily because Denmark and Russia are in the same pot. So something has to be done there. Group C, Amsterdam and Bucharest, also kind of a, a long travel tra tra group. Yeah, we can put the Netherlands there. London and Glasgow, also rel relatively easy uh, because only England qualifies. Bilbao, Spain only qualifies in Munich. So, uh, and again, both are the cities where the host team is already for sure there. So what to do with Denmark and Russia? Well, um, UEFA says we in that case we have to switch the pots. Now to me the most natural thing would be if Russia is really the last team in there with the with, with, with the worst re record, it's easy to swap them with Turkey. Uh, of course you could also swap them with Belgium or Ukraine, but I'm not sure if you want to do that because Russia would finish second and how I how would you uh, why would, would, would you switch with a first place team? So. If really this was a problem between Denmark and Russia, I think one of those two has to uh, be switched. I would actually switch Russia because they're last and switch them with Turkey. So that's what I'm doing here. And now it works. Now we can assign teams uh, accordingly and the groups would look like that. In Group A we have Italy, who will play all three games at home. Denmark and Russia in Group B, but they are only two and three. It, there would be a draw who will play all the three games at home. The Netherlands will play all at home. England, Spain, Germany. And let's draw. Uh, po because pot one, we also know already, but there does need to be much of a draw. The only two teams that are, are left are Belgium and Ukraine. Ukraine cannot play Russia. So we have to put Ukraine in group C and Belgium in group B. And if really the pots are like that, as I said, and in all likelihood they will be, of course they can be signed. We would start the draw with exactly this picture because we can already assign Belgium and Ukraine. The whole pot one is assigned. Now I want to finish out the draw. I actually asked uh, my wife and my daughter to pick, give me a random sequence number or pick flags. And so it's not a true rand rand draw, but here is a possible draw taking everything into account. We took, uh, we assigned from pot four, we need to assign four teams. My wife did it as follows um, and they are now italicized because of course this is now really um, a random draw of one possibility. She put Croatia with Italy, France with England, Turkey with Spain and Poland with Germany which already looks nice. Then pot three we um, got Czechia, uh, Czechia with Italy and Croatia. We have Finland with Ukraine and the Netherlands. Then Austria, not a nice group for Austria, for England and France. Uh, Switzerland joins Turkey and Spain and Portugal would uh, join Germany and Poland. So that's already quite an interesting group. And then my daughter said she wants to pick the flags for the other ones and she decided on the following. 
Wales, Italy, Croatia and uh, Czechia. Uh, Sweden goes with Belgium, Denmark, Russia and Sweden. This I think would be a very interesting group because you have a Darwin there, you have still Belgium and Russia. Sweden is either playing in Copenhagen or in St. Petersburg, which is uh, kind of geographically nice. So I think that group would be really interesting. Belgium would be a huge favorite uh, there. Group C, Ukraine, Netherlands, Finland, Iceland. I would be a dream draw for the Netherlands and probably Ukraine, Finland and Iceland. Pesky opponents, but I don't think anyone would look there. Uh, England, France would dominate their group as well, especially with England playing all the games at home. Um, with Slovakia joining there. Then uh, kind of an iffy group. Spain, that's all right, but Turkey, Switzerland and the Kosovo. I mean, Switzerland has some weird relations to both of these other nations and I think Group F would for me be uh, absolute uh, dream slash nightmare group with Germany, Poland, Portugal and Serbia. I think Serbia uh, against Germany, Germany against Poland, Germany, uh, Portugal. Ah, yeah, so a lot of things. So this is one possible draw. As I said, I could spin it no further. I don't want to do that. But um, you see how the draw might turn out and how much we already know. So it's probably not much of a draw that we will see. Uh, I really hope that it would work out this way because uh, because of all the restrictions that, you know, Serbia would not be able to play Kosovo, but they're probably anyway all in pot four. It might not be a, we might not be able to get a final draw and then we have to wait for the result of the playoffs to actually finalize the groups. It's a huge mess. I really hope that uh, like that we can already, once we know the um, qualified teams and the playoff pairings that we are, will be able to assign. Let me know what you thought about uh, this video, especially how you think the draw will go. Do you agree that the pots will be like that? I just wanted to illustrate with one example how things might go. It would have been interesting to say all teams that are still possible to qualify, all host nations, how that would happen, but it wouldn't be that hard because most of those would be in pot four where we can actually assign them. So it would not make a huge dif difference if that should happen. So that would be also a nice thing. It would just uh, make the draw even less exciting than it is already to me, because for me the biggest excitement would be if we really don't know a thing, but we already know quite some stuff. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos on Euro 2020, jerseys, uh, current Champions League, European club season and so on. Uh, and yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.